Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make a pumpkin roll and this is what it looks like. This is a sponge cake that's flavored with pumpkin and all those wonderful spices. And then we're going to add a cream cheese filling. That's just so good. And that it has also some chopped nuts. So the first thing we need to do is to preheat our oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 190 degrees Celsius. And then you will need a baking pan. Uh, this is 10 by 15 inches, which is 25 by 38 centimeters. And then what we're first going to do is butter our pan. You could use, or you could just spray it with one of those nonstick sprays. And what I do is I just melt a little butter. And then I'm, as you can see here, I'm using a pastry brush. And then what we're going to do is line our pan with a piece of uh, parchment paper, like so. I like to have a little overhang because it's easier when we're taking um, our sponge cake out of the pan, if you have a little bit of an overlap. And then what I'm going to do, because we don't want our cake to stick to the paper, is I'm going to butter our parchment. Like so. And then I'm going to flour it. You could use one of those uh, non-stick sprays that you can buy now that actually have flour in it. That's the other choice. But since I don't have that, I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way. And then I'm just going to put some flour in there. And kind of... Now, normally, I do this over the sink. So... So I just kind of do that, and then I'm just going to tap out the excess. A little noisy there. Okay, so that is our pan. Now for our batter, if you have an electric stand mixer like I have here, use your paddle attachment, or you could use a hand mixer for this. So like I said, this is a, a, essentially a sponge cake. We're not adding, it doesn't have any butter or oil. So you will need three large eggs and have your eggs at room temperature because they beat up a lot better when they're um, at room temperature than if you just took them out of the fridge. And then you will need one cup, which is 200 grams of granulated white sugar. And then I'm going to flavor this with a half a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. Now, if you would prefer, because this does have a lot of spices, this batter, if you prefer to leave out the vanilla, you can. So now what I'm going to do is beat this on high speed until it gets really thick, it's pale, and it's quite fluffy. Now that can take, depending on your mixer, anywhere between 5 and 10 minutes. So it does take quite a while. Okay, that looks good. So this is what you're looking for. It's really nice and thick. It's pale. It's gorgeous. So now, of course, it's a pumpkin roll, so we need some. So you will need two-thirds of a cup, which is 160 milliliters, or if you want to go by gram weight, it's 150 grams of pumpkin uh, puree. I always use canned. Uh, you know, I, I've made my own, but really, if you have access to canned, it's, it's every bit as good. Just make sure you buy the one that does not have the spices added. Now, if you wanted to make your own, in the head note of the recipe, I have uh, a, a, the instructions of how to make your own. So, um, we're going to add that and just beat it in. very simple to do and it just colors your batter. It's such a beautiful orange. And then for our dry ingredients in a separate bowl I have three quarters of a cup which is 95 grams of all-purpose flour. You may know that as plain flour. And to that I'm going to add for spices I'm adding a half a teaspoon one gram of ground ginger and a half a teaspoon one gram of ground ginger or cinnamon and then I always like a little cloves 
So an eighth of a teaspoon of ground cloves, and then we need uh, a half a teaspoon, three grams of baking soda, and a half a teaspoon, two grams of baking powder, and then just a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. So I'm just gonna put all that in there. Now, if you wanted to adjust your um, spices, you can do that. Or you can leave out, like some people don't like ground cloves, you could just leave that out. You could add a little allspice or even nutmeg, ground nutmeg if you want. So I'm just whisking that. You could sift it as well, either one. Just make sure everything is mixed together and get a little air into our flour. Okay, and then I'm just going to stir my dry ingredients in. You could beat it in, but... I'm just going to add it in here. Pretty easy batter to make, as you can see. And then just stir it in. Make sure, I don't want to deflate our batter too much, so we just want to make sure that our flour is mixed in. Just kind of down and up to make sure. Get the bottom of the bowl there. Okay, that looks good. Make sure it's all mixed in. And then we're just going to pour that into our pan. Gorgeous looking. I can really smell all those spices. Okay, and then I'm just taking an offset spatula. You could just take your the back of a spoon and just even it out. And we're going to bake this. As always, everyone's oven is a little different. And I do, I, you know, I do recommend a freestanding uh, oven thermometer because you know what? It's amazing the calibration of your ovens can be off. I mean, when I bought this new oven, it was off. Because I, so it's a good thing I had that freestanding to make sure. So, so what we're going to do is bake it between 13 and 15 minutes or until it's risen, it's set. If you take your finger and just pre lightly press it, it'll bounce back and a toothpick insert it into the center will come out clean. Just going to, and I just like to bang it a little, get any air bubbles out. So about 13 to 15 minutes. So our cake is done. Doesn't that look gorgeous? So now what we're going to do is what I've done is I have a uh, wire rack here with a clean dish towel. And then what I'm going to do is just sprinkle the dish towel with some powdered sugar. You may know that as confectioner sugar or icing sugar. Just a really good coating because we're going to turn our cake upside down onto this because we have to roll it up. So first, what I'm going to do is take, you can take a knife or a flat edge spatula. Just make sure it's not sticking at all. If you roll your, your sponge cake up while it's still quite warm, it helps, it makes the shape and helps to prevent it from um, cracking because well in that way you unroll it you put your filling and then roll it up again and then you don't have as much although this this tends to this pumpkin roll is so moist it does tend to crack a little so what I'm going to do take I just want to make sure just lift it up make sure it's it's coming away you don't want it sticking to your pan and then I'm just going to flip it upside down onto my there we go onto my clean dish towel. And then I'm just going to peel off, as you can see. Peel 
off my paper. It's gorgeous. And then I'm going to sprinkle the top with some more icing sugar. And then we're going to roll it up. Now, I kind of waffle of which way I want to roll it, whether I want to roll it the long way or the short way. I guess it depends how thick you want your sponge roll to be. But I am going, I typically do it the long way and maybe that's what we'll do today. But if you want a really thick with a lot of filling, you can do it this way. So what I do is just kind of take my towel, just turn this and roll it. Just roll it loosely like so, like that. And then I'm just going to leave it to cool. So we're going to leave that. It's probably maybe a half hour or so or you could do it longer. And then once that's cooled down to room temperature, then we will make our filling. So now our sponge roll has cooled to room temperature, so we're ready to make our cream cheese filling. But the first thing we need to do, I like to toast the nuts that we are going to add to the filling. I find that really brings out their flavor. So you will need one cup, which is about 100 grams of my personal favorite here is either pecans or walnuts. So what you want to do is put them in a, uh, on a baking sheet and put them in a 350 degree Fahrenheit, which is 180 degree Celsius oven for somewhere around eight minutes, just until they turn like lightly brown and you can start to smell them and then let them cool completely. And then we want to coarsely chop them. I'm actually using pecans. I particularly like them in this because I find when you toast them, it kind of brings out their uh, uh, caramel flavor, which goes really nice with the, the flavors of the cream cheese and the uh, pumpkin roll. So what you, when I chop my nuts, I just do it by hand. I put them on a cutting board. I take a fairly large knife. And what I do is on the end of it, I put the heel of my hand, other my left hand, and then with my right, I just chop, like so. And that's how I chop my nuts. I mean, you can, if you have a food processor, you can put them in there, but either way. So now, for our uh, filling, it's a cream cheese, so good. You can use uh, electric stand mixer like I have here with your paddle attachment. You could use a hand mixer. You could even use your food processor for this. You will need eight one eight ounce package, which is 225 grams of full fat cream cheese. And I like to have your cream cheese at room temperature and just put that in there. And then along with that, just to smooth it all out and add a little flavor, I'm adding two tablespoons, 25 grams of butter and how you know make sure it's quite soft here and you can use salted or unsalted either one and then i like a little vanilla vanilla goes good with hair <laughs> in baking so i'm adding one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract and i'm just going to beat these together just until everything's all nice and creamy and smooth and we get a little air into the mixture good it's just all mixed together and now we need some sugar so I'm adding one cup which is 115 grams of confectioner sugar you may know that is powdered or icing sugar and I did sift that to get rid of all the lumps because as you know confectioner sugar tends to uh, be quite lumpy so and now I'm just going to beat this, start it on slow speed. You don't want that sugar coming up in your face. And then I beat it for a couple of minutes because I want to get it nice, nice and light and fluffy. Okay, that looks good. So you just we want to all mix together and get a little bit of air. And now I'm just going to add my chopped pecans and just beat that in, or you could just fold it in with your, your uh, spatula either way. Okay. 
This filling is <laughs> so good. Okay. Let's give it a quick stir. Make sure it's all mixed together. So there you have it. Oh, wonderful. So now I'm just going to unroll. That. So I want, this is the, um, the top side of the cake. So we want to put on the bottom, we want to put our filling. Again, you could roll it the other way, the uh, short way, make it a really fat, short and uh, fat sponge roll, or you could do it the way I'm doing it. And then you can take a knife, back of a spoon, or I'm using an offset spatula just to spread. It's delicious filling. You know, this is, it's a perfect, I, any time of the year, but especially in the fall, in the winter months, you might want to serve this at Thanksgiving. I mean, it's a nice, you can have it along with a pumpkin pie or, you know, as an alternative, something different. Or just on a regular night because you want something a little sweet. Or a lot sweet, I should say. Okay, that looks good. Oh, so beautiful with those. You know, the, the pecans or uh, walnuts or... You know, you can even use hazelnuts. It just adds, really adds texture and flavor. And then what we're going to do is just roll our sponge up. Try to roll it fairly tight. If it cracks, which mine is, don't worry because um, when this really should be refrigerated. And then it kind of all softens and you won't even notice. And we can always, and I'm just going to gently... We can always cover it with powdered sugar. So there we have it. So normally what, what's great about this is it actually is best if you refrigerate it even overnight, at least several hours. And that way all the uh, sponge with that pumpkin in there will soften and then the, the flavors of the filling and the cake all mix together. So good. <laughs> so it's a great do ahead dessert which I know if you're going to do it for Thanksgiving, that's what you want. And then just put lots of powdered sugar. You know, if you wanted to, you could decorate it with uh, whipping cream. You could kind of put rosettes all the way down and then put maybe some pecans on top if you really want to get fancy. But you know what? I just think it looks gorgeous just like this. I don't think it needs anything more. So I'm going to just cut off the piece. Like I said, normally I would cover and refrigerate this at least a few hours to let everything kind of mix together. But well, I'm just going to, I guess I should eat with fork, but I'm just going to use my fingers. Oh. <laughs> that, that is really wonderful. Um, That pumpkin um, cake, it's soft, it's moist, it's so flavorful with all those spices in the pumpkin. And then, what can I say about cream cheese filling with those chopped nuts? I mean, a wonderful dessert. Try it. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com.